good evening all and uh, welcome to this ime episode of uh, diabetes covid 19 and mycomycosis which is a topic i'm going to discuss already uh, dr vijayalakshmi has given uh, elegant talk about uh, the mycomycosis and the role of uh, diabetes i'm here to talk about the diabetes so diabetes and covid is a double pandemic we know and now we got an epidemic and a double pandemic so how to manage this issue that's what i'm going to talk today the agenda today is uh, so what are type of diabetes we have seen during this covid era and uh, our main focus is about uh, the pathophysiology of what is called the covid diabetes which i'm going to talk uh, discuss about this and also the diabetes and the management of covid and also the mucormycosis an epidemic in this double pandemic and also going to give a, a clinical tips about the management of covid diabetes what we do in our hospital and also the take home messages uh, in managing the diabetes control during hospitalizations and post hospitalization also on the role of uh, technology in team during this current era and to summarize i'll just take this forward generally uh, the type of diabetes which we have seen in this covid era i just defined this four type of diabetes generally so one is the steroid induced diabetes so which is uh, very well known for the past one and a half years that the usage of steroids is going high especially in the diabetes community and also the impending diabetes which is one thing which came out when we use the steroid there are a lot of uh, new onset of diabetes also so we have to just think about uh, uh, the steroid as it is not alone just increasing the sugar level for everybody only those patients who are having impending diabetes when you use a steroid so the sugar level goes very high and they are the persons who are prone to get diabetes in the future we have to be very careful so this type of uh, uh, steroid induced diabetes has been more prevalent during the current era and also undoubtedly we are living in the stressful era where the stress induced diabetes so there are a lot of studies of happened which shows that there is an increase to cortisol level during the hospitalizations of the covid patient so stress increases the cortisol and increases the hyperglycemia so type of stress induced diabetes and the more important thing actually we need more data to say that actually currently in india almost 77 million people of diabetes so and the prevalence of pre diabetes also increasing so because of the lockdown the sedentary lifestyle high snack eating and less physical activity so the new type of sedentary lifestyle and uh, in, in decreased physical activity leads to the sedentary lifestyle and diabetes especially the type 2 diabetes prevalence is more especially in the younger population living in the third decade and even uh, second decade also they work from home and uh, without any much physical activity they develop sedentary lifestyle and uh, increases the chances of going you know, insulin resistance and diabetes so today i'm just going to talk about one of the very important aspect of uh, the covid itself which uh, leads to diabetic things what we call the sars cov diabetes it's called the covid diabetes so globally there are registries happening about the covid diabetes people who are not diabetic earlier so because of the infection so due to virus this virus how uh, it leads to diabetes the last one here actually when the first wave came so people started uh, telling that the diabetic community or more vulnerable group uh, getting diabetes so a lot of research has happened how this happened and what is the pathophysiology behind these things so i just uh, divide this pathogenic mechanisms in patients with type 2 diabetes and covid into inflammation and insulin resistance immunomodulation renin angiotensin aldosterone system so this is the basic uh, pathogenic mechanism in patients with uh, type 2 diabetes uh, and covid 19 the basic mechanism of getting diabetes in the covid patients so as such to get uh, uh, diabetes the main cause is insulin resistance so as such you know the covid is a immunothrombotic disease there are a lot of inflammatory markers are elevated in the covid and uh, especially we think about the crp levels the deferritin the d dimer the interleukin so all those things there are a lot of theories proposed which says that the virally induced inflammation increases the insulin resistance and also because of the large burden of inflammatory cells can affect the function of the skeletal vessels and then the liver which are the major insulin responsive organs that are responsible for the bulk of insulin mediated glucose uptake which is disturbed and this leads uh, the inflammatory pathway leads to uh, insulin resistance and causes diabetes this is one proposal and also one of the other theory was says that the immunomodulation so what happen in diabetes is 
natural killer cells are decreased. In SARS-CoV-2, it increases the production of interferon gamma, which activates the natural killer cells and acts as a defensive mechanism. In diabetes, what happens? The natural killer cells are reduced. And especially patients presenting with high HbA1c at the time of admissions, those are on the vulnerable group where uh, this uh, natural killer cells are reduced and uh, they form a immunomodulatory pathway which have a direct relationship with the impact glucose metabolism and leads to a uh, high amount of insulin resistance and prevent diabetes. The other important mechanism is the renin angiotensin aldosterone systems. So right now we know that the AC2 has already received much attention as it can also serve uh, as an entry receptor for SARS-CoV-2. So we see the AC2 receptors in the lung parenchyma. now. There are also evidence suggests that the AC2 is expressed in many human cells and tissues, including the pancreatic islets. Some evidence suggests that association between the AC2 and glucose regulation. So infections with SARS-CoV-2 can cause hyperglycemia in people without pre-existing diabetes. So this is uh, the interlink between the renal angiotensin system, angiotensin system and the AC2 and how it leads to diabetes in a non-diabetic patient who was affected with the COVID. So taking into part the inflammatory pathway, the immunomodulatory pathway and then the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So we can understand about the infections as COVID cause was COVID-2 patients which can lead to uh, one is uh, the immunothrombotic mechanisms where it can just cause acute lung disease, I, acute AR, uh, ARDS and also they can just cause uh, cardiovascular events and thromboembolisms. Whereas these RAS in, uh, system have with increased angiotensin 2 which leads to the insulin resistance and also leads to the hyperglycemic states. So what I just want to highlight in this slide is actually the uh, SARS-CoV itself is uh, one of the risk factors for increasing the insulin resistance in different pathways, especially the inflammation, immunomodulation, and then the RA system, which causes insulin resistance and leads to hyperglycemia. And now actually we learned about the COVID and diabetes. So we got an epidemic uh, among this uh, pandemic situations so what we are uh, trying to hear about the black fungus. So what is the current news today is in India almost the five states uh, which has uh, recorded almost 11,717 cases of black fungus or mycomycosis has been seen in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Telangana. And now we started seeing cases in Tamil Nadu also. So this is all uh, the latest government data which shows that uh, the prevalence of black fungus in our community. So what is the reason? which we are not seen in the earlier wave and now we started seeing more number of patients especially actually uh, Dr. Vijayashmi given uh, the reasons about the black fungus, the origin and then the, uh, why it is prevalent in the community there are a lot of hypotheses also as we have seen um, we have just heard about the reason one maybe the diabetic which I am going to discuss about this the other causes they just talk about uh, the zinc or uh, tap water or uh, the industrial oxygen and a lot of uh, theories are within but the main, actually among the 11,717 cases presented here, so more than 60% of them are diabetic. So there is a link between the diabetes and uh, the black fungus. So, you know, actually the recovery study showed uh, the uh, importance of dexamethasone, the benefit of dexamethasone. So now a rational use of the dexamethasones even at earlier onset of COVID itself and uh, our, the monitoring of glucose control going unnoticed uh, patients uh, going for an immune fatigue stage where the prevalence of uh, mycormycosis is more prevalent especially in diabetes and what is the mechanism here I am just going to discuss. So the prevalence currently it's almost 0.14 cases per thousand populations which definitely comes around 140 cases in a, a million and uh, the reason for uh, getting mycormycosis in diabetes is the immunocompromised individual especially diabetes, uh, malignant patients, uh, post transplant patients. So when you talk about the diabetic patients, how this mucormycosis affects especially the diabetes community. So one side, when the patients got admitted to the diabetes, if the sugars are going unnoticed, uncontrolled, then they lead to the stage called a diabetic ketosis. So already patients getting steroid in a diabetic patients, the sugar level goes high and the diabetic ketosis, the pH goes less, the acidic pH and also it releases iron content. So iron is freely available in the BK diabetic ketosis then. There is a, a high amount of uh, iron uptake uh, and uh, which leads to the fungal heme oxygenase which promotes the iron absorption metabolism in the fungus which leads to growth of the fungus easily and also it survives in this environment 
and it can just uh, you can call as a furious fungus it can just have an anti-invasive property it can just uh, goes and damage the organs this is a very uh, uh, aggressive fungal and uh, we have to be very careful so especially in a diabetic patients the control is important and judicious use of steroid is very important if you don't uh, take care of these things definitely it going to be a worsen impact and uh, uh, already patients in covid were all recovery phase they have an immune fatigue problem. So when you use a higher amount of steroid in those kind of patients, and also the sugars are not controlled, definitely it leads to the fungal aggregations due to the decreased phagocytic activity in those kind of patients. So this is the mechanism which has been seen in the diabetes patients getting mucormycosis. So how to manage COVID and diabetes? For the management of COVID, I thank our COVID care team, Dr. Sridhar and Dr. Vijayalishmi for giving an elegant approach from the last year. So we saw, uh, we just follow a simple uh, rhythm, especially we learned the down position, the prone position helps the patients and uh, the steroid, dexamethasone really plays a vital role and we have to just use where we have to use the steroid, daltiparin, anticoagulin. As you know, COVID is a thrombotic, dexamethasone and daltiparin plays a vital role in saving the life of the patients. And today I'm here to talk about one of the uh, four the D is the diabetes control, which is going to play a vital role in this second field because we know that dexamethasone and dalperin is going. The dexamethasone usage is uh, going where people started using in uh, different uh, situations where it should not be used, and then the prolonged uh, steroid usage, which is going to have an impact in diabetes control. So here I'm just going to talk about the diabetes control. So the management of COVID diabetes. Uh, how we can just approach. So when you talk about diabetes control, so we get uh, the parameters, how we can just manage we your insulin and then the oral hypoglycemic agents. So first we should know what are the agents we can use very safely and what are the agents we have to avoid or we have to use cautiously. So we can just split the patients uh, in a different groups. I'll take the extents and uh, what are the studies has been done in the COVID diabetic patients the COVID patients who are all affected with diabetes, which has a benefit in just improving uh, the diabetes control in COVID patients especially. So insulin, undoubtedly, is a good agent uh, to start uh, patients uh, with on steroids. We can easily titrate the dosage. And I'll talk about uh, how we can choose the insulin regimen in the next slides. The DPP-4 inhibitor. I just want to emphasize about the DPP-4 inhibitor for the COVID patients. It is a very safe drug. We can just use it for COVID patients. There are a lot of studies has been done. And when you talk about the AC2 uh, receptors, so there are some AC2 receptors of binding to the DPP-4. When you use a molecule DPP-4 inhibitor, actually it is also benefit for the COVID patients. So it is a very safe drug. We can use in any uh, COVID, like moderate or even severe patients, patients, DPP-4 is going to be a really very helpful molecule. The GLP-1 analog. Especially GLP-1 analog is very useful when a patient with diabetes already they have a vascular complications uh, and they develop uh, those patients with diabetes and cardiac illness. The GLP-1 analog, uh, which has proven a uh, benefit in the patients who are uh, having uh, multiple comorbidity, especially diabetes and CAD. Metformin is a good drug for uh, insulin resistance. It can be just used in mild to moderate cases. Sulfonylurea is also a very good agent but hypoglycemic risk is uh, uh, very high. So we use it with a very cautious for the stable patients. We can just choose uh, either the glimepride or glycolacid, which is a very safe. The main important point, which I just want to highlight is what are the drugs to be, we should be very cautious and uh, to avoid is, what is the SGL2 inhibitor? So we now get a lot of data about the SGL2 inhibitors, which is a very good drug, for, especially for the diabetic, even in a primary prevention, so preventing the complications. So we got Empiric trial, the DAPA CKD trial, and all those benefit we saw in the diabetes patients. It's a wonderful drug. And now we can see when you talk about the diabetes management augmentorium, this SGL2 inhibitor is a good drug of choice for diabetes patients. But for COVID patients, we have to be very careful. As, as it is, you know that the sodium glucose transport inhibitor, it brings the glucose in the urine. It may cause dehydration, or some erythroidins, or even euglycemic ketosis. When the patients are treated with the COVID, their oral intake gets poor, and then use the molecule with this acid, or even actually it can just worsen the situations. So better to avoid in a moderate to severe patients, the SGT inhibitors, once the patient is stable, we can just use the molecule. And glitazone, as such, we know that the 
covid causes the alveolar fluid overload so it can already in the animate state when you use the glitter salts which is going to cause edema so this can also cause uh, our harm and we need more data on those things so better to avoid the glitter salts uh, to do for these moderate and severe patients so putting in a nutshell i just want to give uh, the management of covid diabetes i split the patients whether it is a hospitalized patients or non hospitalized patients and even the post discharge also so in this slide we can just uh, uh, have a elegant view about uh, the usage of all the medications the insulin and the oral hypoglycemic agents so you can just split the patients whether patients in uh, covid affected living in an environment where high covid and also in a home quarantine patient has a mild covid so they can just very well use any of the molecules insulin metformin dpp4 glp1 or the, even alpha glucosidase inhibitors so when you talk about uh, uh, one thing in about the indian populations most of the time are in the postnatal hyperglycemic state and also when you use a steroid also so we can just use the alpha glucosidase inhibitor which is going to reduce the postnatal hyperglycemia so for mild patients they can use any of this drug and can be just uh, uh, cautious about using the sulfonylurea SGLT inhibitors even in the patients who are getting because of uh, chances of hypoglycemia and uh, depending upon the intake because during this uh, covid uh, the intake if they have a poor intake uh, they may have a euglycemic ketosis so to be cautious be just uh, be cautious when using SGLT inhibitor when the patient is having a severe and other cardiac, cardiac disease if it is treated definitely we can use SGLT for these patients so when the patients get admitted to the hospital we just uh, uh, take this patient as a mild moderate or severe uh, depending upon the patient's clinical conditions the o2 requirement and then uh, other illness so if the patient is a mild disease first uh, they are not having uh, occurring the oxygen saturation the patient is stable recovering from covid so we can just use insulin for those patients and if the patient is using steroid so one thing about uh, uh, i just want to make sure clear that uh, so most of the patients we are treating in the hospital almost 90% is of type 2 diabetes patients so only very few people are uh, type 2 diabetes are admitted in the covid ward so type 2 diabetes is a insulin resistant stage and there is a misnomer that whenever patients get hospitalized in the hospital we have to go only with the insulin so this is what uh, the physician do mistakes when they admit the patients in the hospital and uh, they stop all oral hypoglycemic agents and go for insulin so when they use insulin alone for a stable patients it becomes very challenging uh, to bring the sugar under control and especially in a setup when you use the most steroid so admission hbo1c is very important and uh, choosing the oral hypoglycemic agents on for the stable patient is also very important otherwise it will be very challenging because we are dealing with insulin resistance patients insulin secretion endogenous insulin secretion is already there so already a, a patient is having insulin but again going to the insulin it become very challenging to bring the sugar under control so combining the insulin and the same oral hypoglycemic agents it be a good choice for mild to moderate patients so choose either insulin at first so we can go for a basal bolus regime and then we can just use very safely the dpp4 inhibitors metformin and glp1 analogs can be considered for the mild cases if the sugars are not controlled then we can just go for sulfonylurea sglt inhibitors even they recommend alpha glucose demin and those patients more of insulin the assistance insulin sensitive thiazolidans can be used in the mild disease so patient is going for a mild to moderate disease the hospital is set up so the drug of choice will be first the insulin dpp4 metformin and glp1 analogs depending upon the steroid dosage you can just uh, titrate the insulin doses will be very easy when the steroids uh, dosage is increased accordingly we can just increase the insulin dosage also and uh, the dpp4 and the metformin and glp1 analogs can be used safely for the moderate disease so when you go for uh, moderate cases use of sulfonated alpha glucosidase inhibitors uh, we have to use it very cautiously if the patient is uh, not going for frequent hypoglycemia and uh, better to avoid thiazolidins and sglt inhibitors in the moderate disease because of uh, edema uh, and also the risk of euglycemic ketosis so when the patient is going from moderate to severe illness so when the patient is admitted in icu definitely the icu insulin infusion will be iv insulin infusion is the top choice and uh, also studies done that the dpp4 inhibitors are even safer for the severe disease also so better to avoid other agents in this uh, group of patients so this is a simple algorithm where we can just uh, follow for the patients hospitalized and non hospitalized uh, affected with the covid so how to approach diabetes care in the hospital setting so i am just briefing about what we do in our hospital so this is what we do uh, we formed a protocol that whenever a patient 
with COVID, whether they are diabetic or non-diabetic, they have to be checked, the random blood sugar at the point of entry to the hospital, even in the emergency ward. And we do a HbA1c for all the patients. So this will just detect the impending pre-diabetic or diabetic earlier. And also just gives us a clue that the, whether we use a steroid for those kind of patients, or how the sugars will have an impact. So even in a pre-diabetic stage, we just monitor uh, the sugar and then we see that how the patients respond. And uh, during hospitalization, so basically, when you choose the insulin, you just go for uh, basal bolus insulin. That is the right approach. And the most of the physician, we try to go for a sliding scale insulin. I can agree that the volume overload of diabetes patients in the COVID is almost more than 60% 60, 60 of the patients who are admitted uh, with COVID are diabetic. And uh, we have to just treat uh, 60, uh, more than uh, if a patient are almost uh, 10 beds there, six patients are diabetic. And uh, you can just see a number of wards in the hospital for flooded with the diabetes patients. It becomes very uh, difficult for challenges for the physicians to treat and manage the diabetes and also for the nurses. So for them, it may be easy to give them the sliding scale insulin. I just uh, disagree with the sliding scale approach of insulin management uh, in diabetes control. So why? Because there are a lot of studies also proven that the basal bolus insulin therapy is a better choice than sliding scale insulin. So sliding scale insulin is nothing but uh, chasing the number. Just to chasing the number in the sense uh, when the patients have a hypo, just into the dextrose and then the sugar level goes time, give them the insulin. And uh, we don't bother about uh, so most of the time where the nurses or uh, with overload, so they just uh, follow the advice of the doctors and uh, they administer the insulin whether the patient takes uh, oral intake or not. So because of that, atrogenic, they can just cause hypoglycemia, which is also going to worsen the situations and which also causes what we call the glycemic variability, the fluctuating sugar. Studies has been now uh, ongoing, so the importance of glycemic variability, which leads to oxidative stress and endocrine dysfunctions are happening, which is going to cause us uh, more complications in the future. So better to avoid this kind of uh, errors in, in the hospitalized patients. So the managing the glycemic explosions due to steroid therapy can be done with uh, 24 hours uh, on admissions uh, sugar level monitoring. So we can just be able to titrate uh, the glucose control with the proper insulin therapy uh, depending upon the steroid dosage. So today we have a tool what we call as a continuous glucose monitoring study. So this is uh, nothing but the ambulatory glucose profile which can be just, uh, this is like a sensor, I can just uh, show you. This is what is a sensor and then we've got a reader. So which can just monitor the sugar level for uh, every five minutes and it gives a complete profile of glucose for the patients uh, when we just pick the sensor for 14 days. So patients staying for a long stay in the hospital, definitely this is going to help you. And especially patients on steroid. So instead of picking every time, then with the help of the reader, we can just see the readings and we can monitor the sugar level and administer the insulin according to the sugar level. So now, actually, we are just even looking after about the precision diabetes care, what we call is a time in range. So when you fix a, a time in range, that is especially when you are treating a diabetes, we have to fix a goal for the kind of patients whom we are treating, whether the aged patients, uh, whether patients are having comorbid illness. So depending upon the patient's profile, whether they have a cardiac illness, a CKD or a CLD, patients' uh, oral intake, depending upon that, we can fix what should be the goal for the fasting, what should be the goal for the postfrontal, and how should be the rate of blood sugar. And uh, the study says that uh, if the patient is maintaining the time in range, that is what we fix for each patient, for at least out of 24 hours, if they maintain time in range of more than 16 hours, is really going to help them for them. So we can be able to identify the time in range when you do a continuous glucose monitoring study profile with this small sensor. And it uh, actually changed the uh, practice during this COVID era. And people started using the CGMS study for the patients who are staying for a long time, especially the diabetic community. So we treat patients uh, in the hospital, but uh, the main thing is it won't end uh, when, uh, when just treating the patients in the hospital alone. The problem arises uh, because of uh, the proper discharge plan is not uh, given to the patients when they discharge. So this is what we stand here. So this is what we want to learn today, because actually the problem of all this uh, new epidemic is uh, the beginning of this problem is because of the pro uh, not proper discharge plan is given to the patients. So we have to just remember a few things when you discharge the patients. So when the patient is stable, you are planning for the discharge, give them the proper diabetic advice. So some people may require a steroid for a few days. So depending upon that, they need to monitor. So we advise the patients to monitor the oxygen saturation in the home and people now aware that uh, what is the normal saturation level. So now for the diabetic patients, we have to educate the patient and also the family members about the importance of glycemic control and about how to prevent this kind of uh, actually post-COVID sickle, especially the uh, furious fungus 
so they need a self monitoring blood glucose at home so like pulse oximeter you can just advise them to take a glucometer and monitor the sugar level advise them what should be the target and uh, the his hypoglycemic risk is there when you treat with insulin or higher doses of medications when they are especially using uh, patients with steroids so give them the uh, uh, notifications about what is hypoglycemia and how to manage the hypoglycemia at home just give them the 15 15 rule it is nothing but 15 grams glucose is one tablespoon of glucose mixed with 100 ml of water as if to take it when the patient is stable and check the blood sugar after 15 minutes if the sugar levels less than 70 is called a hypoglycemia and if it is going uh, above that range within 15 minutes then they are they safe if the patient still hypoglycemic then they have to contact the doctor hospital and need a further management minor mild hypoglycemia can be managed at home and uh, we can just educate them about how to prevent the hypoglycemia while tapering the insulin dosage when they are use uh, insulin uh, steroid dosage steroid dosage how to give them the adjustment about uh, managing the sugar level with the correcting the insulin dosage adjustments so we need a dedicated care team to give them the proper education so education is very important when you discharge the patients and now actually when you sort discharge the patients we have to just uh, want about what dr vijayesh me said about the red flags of uh, reno orbital cerebral vapor mycosis so they should have a carry home list of warning symptoms what dr vijayesh me discussed so this also should be given in the discharge summary if the notice because early notifications early are uh, in the identify especially in the diabetic patients so we can just prevent a lot of complications so more than that actually they have to be connected with the patient uh, with the doctor the patients if they discharge they forget that everything is over so some people may be telling that uh, during hospital i just got a sugar after that it becomes normal it's not the thing they should come for a follow up visit then only they can just get rid of uh, the post uh, uh, covid recovery complications so these are the main discharge plan they should keep in mind and today actually we are uh, living in the technology era and uh, the technology and the team the diabetes care team plays a vital role so government last year approved that the virtual consultation especially it becomes uh, during this lockdown saved millions of diabetes populations they find very difficult to approach uh, uh, they meet the person uh, doctors in person the virtual consultation is one of the very important tool which open the window for the diabetes patient especially the chronic conditions to control manage the sugar level and also uh, due to this technology the other diabetes care team especially the role of diabetic educators so when you start using uh, insulin for the patients with uncontrolled sugars the diabetic care team due to the uh, virtual consultations they can just uh, guide them very well about uh, the techniques of how to manage uh, how to take the insulin and manage hypoglycemia in the home and nutrition consultations virtually and psychiatric counseling because of the stressful period the diabetes community suffered a lot of psychological complications during the first wave so they need a psychiatric counseling so that has been done virtually and also patient wellness program and one of the very important complications due to diabetes is diabetic foot ulcerations so the lot of uh, earlier stage of cellulitis or even diabetic foot ulcerations can be treated very well in uh, appropriate antibiotic and proper glycemic control when the, even the podiatric care can be given virtually and uh, we uh, during this pandemic we have saved a lot of limbs during this uh, phase because of the technology and also in covid what we did uh, uh, the last month is uh, we understood uh, patients need and they need a the help uh, things we started the diabetes helpline formed by the diabetes care team it has been uh, just monitored by the uh, diabetic educators and then the diabetic nurses who are trained in this field they answer the queries they answer the basic queries and even if they have a complicated queries it could be answered by the diabetes care team and we got a lot of calls and we are getting often calls from the patients and we are helping by this way and even a hospital any hospital setup can just take this forward and they can just also get connected with this type of helpline for the hospital setups so with all these things i just want to summarize that diabetes is a very important factor we have to just look into it to prevent uh, the post covid cycle especially the preventing this complications uh, this motor mycosis so in the first way we understood that the uh, underlying diabetes and cardiovascular disease are considered as the risk factors for increased uh, covid-19 disease and severe worse outcomes including the higher mortality especially the diabetes patients the potential pathogenic links between covid-19 and diabetes we understood one thing is the inflammation pathway the immunomodulatory pathway and then the renin angiotensin aldosterone systems which are leads to the activations of a glucose uh, hemostasis mechanism and leads to covid diabetes and uh, during this covid-19 pandemic the tight control of glucose level and prevention of diabetes complications may be a crucial in patients with diabetes mellitus to keep susceptibility low and also to prevent severe course of covid-19 so evidence suggests that the insulin and dpp4 inhibitors can be used safely in patients 
with uh, mild, moderate and severe diseases of diabetes and COVID-19, which really helps for the patients. And uh, uh, right now, the pharmacologic agents like uh, steroids used for the treatment of COVID-19 can affect the glucose metabolism, particularly in patients with diabetes mellitus. So we have to be very judicious, use, uh, safe use of uh, steroid for the patients and also closely monitor the diabetes and control the sugar level to prevent the complications. The new epidemic in the double pandemic, the mucormycosis in the second wave can be prevented with wise use of steroid and sugar control. So glycemic control is a one important factor we have to just look up into it and uh, in this uh, pandemic and epidemic situations so the, when you just want to uh, bring the patients out of uh, covid the diabetes management is one of the very important thing we have to just look into it and we have to understand uh, which type of patients we are dealing and which type of molecule is going to save and uh, i just uh, I end this talk with all of you to just take this forward and bring the sugars under control for the patients whom we are treating thank you so much